Welcome to Buckets. This is Action Network's basketball betting podcast presented by BetMGM. I'm Maria Marino, back here with Action Network writer Jim Turvey at Turvey Bets on Twitter and the Action app. Okay, Jim, I think you and I are both hurting a bit right now because <laughs> uh, we both kind of like the Liberty coming into this series and... <sighs> Game one of the finals is is done. It's over, and didn't look good for the Libs. Yeah, so for for twenty minutes, I think we looked like geniuses. Um, <laughs> I kind of I kind of blacked out. I don't know what happened the the second half there, but I'm going to assume that the rest of the game went perfectly the way the first half did. Um, we we hit all of our bets. The Liberty up one nothing. Oh, no, can't do that. So no, yeah, it was it was an interesting first game. I, it really was a, a a thing where like the first half truly played out. You know kind of exactly how you and I kind of spoke through it. We, we weren't, we didn't say Maureen Johannes is going to hit, you know, several uh, like miraculous circus shots uh, along the way, but the, the Liberty up, they were, they were winning the rebounding battle. They had the lead. They looked in control. And then the second half, it kind of looked like the aces hit the, hit another gear. Now what we can kind of talk through, whether we think that was truly another gear, if it was just, um, you know, Maybe they started hitting some shots that they weren't hitting the first half, but I, it's it's really int- leaves betters in a really interesting spot for game two of of which half they should kind of pay attention to when when it comes to approaching game two. Well, s- sadly, I think that the second half is more accurate than the first in some ways because I think Marine having those fourteen points, which she had all in the first half covered up the flaws of the Liberty. Sabrina Unescu and Courtney Vandersloot in particular struggled. It was really, uh, well, Benaja Laney too. It was really um, a battle of the guards in game one and the guards on the aces, all three of them were dominant and the opposite is true for the the, the starting backcourt for the Liberty. Um, now, that being said, I think you'll probably see a bit of regression on the Las Vegas side because, again, those three played the best they could possibly play. Chelsea Gray with 20, and then Kelsey Plum and Jackie Young, both with playoff career highs, 26 apiece. And then on the other side of it, you know, Sab and Sloot and Laney, all well below, you know, their typical production uh, from a scoring standpoint. So I'm hoping that they will uh, do better. And it's, and it's, look, we, we were, we were frank last episode, you know, we have somewhat of a rooting interest being here in New York, but we also want to see a good series. And we also want to see a a close game for once, which we talked (laughs) about as well. You know, it looked like at the end of the first half, we were finally getting that, that neck and neck battle. And then uh, it was not, So we had some garbage time in the fourth quarter. Uh, So it's like, you know, (laughs) we were, we were just hoping for a better game overall. Yeah. Well, and it, it really is, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to see if that is, is, is the gear that the aces have. Cause you know, uh, here's, here's some numbers. I'll bring some numbers to the table and love her hoop stats. These are from her hoop stats. So that game of of the postseason run for the Aces so far, and they played the Sky and the Wings, who are not nearly on the level of the Liberty, but that was the most points per possession, the best effective field goal percentage, second highest free throw rate, and highest defensive rebound rate of any game for the Aces this postseason. So, you know, you see the defensive rebounding rate, and there is the potential for, you know, maybe the Aces just did have another gear that they, you know, they went in at halftime, Becky kind of really got on them, and they came out, and and look locked in but here's the thing why would they not have done that in the commissioner's cup why would they not have done that in their two losses that they definitely were paying attention to in the regular season now this is a team that is fresh off the finals last year this liberty team hasn't been the finals but they have lots of players who have been in the finals i i I really don't think it's as much as simple as an energy thing you know with the liberty had players getting beat on back cuts it it really is to me i i and and this could be a blind spot i i was not on the aces last year. I'm not on the aces this year, mostly due to, you know, I didn't perceive value in in either market, either time. It could be that I have a blind spot for a level that the aces can get to, especially led by someone like a Chelsea gray 
that they do have that ability to kind of step up. But from what I'm seeing, I'm not entirely shifting my my cap of the series just based off of that one half so far. I would give you a little bit of credit and say that it's not a blind spot because every game between these two has these two opponents have been different. So we've seen we've seen the Liberty completely blow out the aces. And then, you know, we saw them ag- again in the Commissioner's Cup as well uh, beat them handily by, I believe, 17 points or 19 points. Um, so, you know, I, I just think that what's what's frustrating and what makes this a difficult series to predict is that every every game has been lopsided in another direction because because now they're tied three three for the yeah. the uh, the season series between them so far. Um, so, you know, I think, um, to be fair, Courtney Vandersloot and Sabrina Ionescu defense is not their strong suit. It, it definitely is not. Um, they're both undersized and I think they both lack a little bit of quickness when you compare them to like, you're talking about two of the most explosive guards in the league with Jackie Young and Kelsey Plum. And they're, yeah. they're both very quick on that first step. And if they're hot, you know, they they were riding a lot of momentum throughout. Uh, and so it might've just been um, just like a debilitating, discouraging sort of scenario where like Slut and Sab and, you know, I don't know what it is. Is it, is it, is it um, more, more zone? Is it like, we saw that adjustment against Connecticut. Um, is it having Benaja Laney maybe pick up one of those two instead um, cause she's typically better on the defensive end. And then, you know, when you're getting cooked on that end, it, it's sometimes hard to get in a rhythm on your own offensively. So, you know, in the second half, Marine was trapped a lot more. Um, but I still thought that maybe she could have been deployed a little bit more, um, just because of that, that hot hand. Um, so maybe it's an issue of, they're not used to playing with her as much and figuring out like how to set screens for her in in a way that's different. They need to get sad more looks. Um, I thought that there, I didn't watch any point of the game and think, Oh, she had, she had an opening and she didn't take it. Like she would, she never had an open look from three. And that's a problem. Um, because if she gets in a rhythm, we've seen how dangerous she can be. So, um, I'm expecting just because every single meeting between these two has been so different. I have to expect that this game is going to be much different than what we saw in game one. Well, it's really interesting. You you brought up kind of the snowballing effect and it's something I actually hadn't thought of until we, we were just talking this through, but I do wonder if there's something to be said for these two teams when they play, there's something about the dynamic between the two sides where it does kind of snowball. We haven't seen a, we, we've talked about, we haven't seen a close game. We keep wanting a close game and we can't get it. And I do right. wonder if there's something about the, 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 the confidence between these two or the, the leadership or something where yeah. when it snowballs for one team, it really snowballs. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's something that, you know, I had kind of written off as, you know, small sample and it still, it still is only six games. It could just be a coincidence, but I do wonder if, if better start to look at if a team's making a run in the second half, don't look to bet the the team to come back. We've kind of seen this snowball in each game. I think that's something to keep an eye on. Um, You know, it's not a, I I wouldn't put my life on it, but it's just something as we, as we are talking through the game here that I am kind of curious to see, if there is something to that dynamic between these two teams that for whatever reason, when one team gets rolling, the other team kind of slows down and that team just, it just snowballs and it really tends to get out of hand. So uh, a couple other things to note. Uh, We talked about the importance of the rebounding battle on our finals preview and it was close, but the aces did win that battle 34 30. Although I feel very much like Stewie and John Qual Jones did their jobs. Like they both, I thought were pretty effective. It was, this was not a front court issue. Asia Wilson was held relatively in check, which is really all you can ask for. Um, the thing of it is <laughs> the thing that's such a shame for the Liberty. We talked about, uh, the ceiling of their bench. And if they could get a game where one of their bench players goes off 
that could be the edge in the series. And we saw it happen and they didn't capitalize. So that's that's a, a big knock in my book on their ability to win this series. What I do know is if they have a shot in the series, they absolutely must win game two. Because in a five-game series, if you don't, <laughs> it's it's like going down 3-0 in a seven game. Like you're, you know, you, you got to get that split. Um, and so... I'm just going to go right into game two here because it, it makes sense. Um, aces are favored by four and a half. And I feel like I have to lean Liberty and it's, and it's not, it's not because I just feel like I, that's what I want to see happen. It's because they have to, they simply have to win. Like they have to win unless we think, unless we think that the aces are going to, um, win three one or in a sweep. I think the three one is is more um more plausible. But I, I it's just it's very simply must win and the Liberty, I don't I feel nervous even saying this because I don't want to jinx it, but they haven't lost back to back games this season. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. They're they are great back to back. They 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 have not lost, like you said, uh, against the spread they're even excellent um off a off a loss. Yeah, I I also lean Liberty, and I again, <laughs> I feel like we have let let our Liberty love show a little bit, but I I truly this for me is yeah. is less Liberty love and more that my cap just hasn't changed all that much based just on that that second half. The first right. half, like you said, you aren't going to get fourteen points and a half from Marine Johannes every time, but the Aces got to the free throw line uh, much more often than Liberty, Liberty did in that game, and I think there were a couple calls. Um, you know, after the game, John Cole Jones uh, was, was not super happy. Uh, Sandy wasn't super happy. That's maybe a point or two here or there. That's probably not the end of the world. Um, but again, I, can the Aces keep the Liberty off the board to second straight game? It, 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 but the cap for me depends all entirely. And I, I, I keep, hate to keep going back to all, but it really is like, did they have that second gear? That, that second half that we saw, is that just a gear that they have to go to whenever they want? I think when it's a home team, sometimes it can seem like it's an extra gear when really just a few things break their way. And suddenly, you know, we're looking back in hindsight and saying, oh, they had the extra, really a couple things bounced their way and it snowballed. And and that's, okay. you know, that was that. Here's another thing I want to know. Is LeBron James going to be in the house again? And is Tom <laughs> Brady going to be in the house again? Because I saw those two and we know they're winners and they were on the Aces side because obviously Tom is... Uh, invested now in the franchise and then you know LeBron uh sitting courtside he he said he said before the game that uh you know Asia's like his little sister she's wearing his shoes and I'm just like oh yeah. this is, I'm like this ain't, this ain't good yeah we got we got hope that the the game two uh can we get celebrities the out of the building can we, or can please. we just get some some liberty <laughs> celebrities in there come on um but yeah, yeah well I I mean it it it, it it does come down to you know that 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 ex, that second gear and can can the Liberty backcourt do anything defensively against that trio? Because like you said, they had seventy two points. But the wild part is like it really wasn't like they were lights out. I mean, they shot fifty three percent from the field, forty five percent from deep. So like those are good numbers, but they're not like absolutely insane. Have to come back to earth. They just played well because they're three really good guards and got the bulk of the offense. Yeah. Stokes took zero shots. And even Asia, it was a lighter load for her than normal. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see what Sandy has has cooked up. You know, I, I think you you mentioned in passing we could see a little bit of zone, um, but with with someone like Plum, she almost I seems know. like I'm, she's I'm like worried about the perfectly crafted in a machine to defeat a zone. She can shoot, she can slash, like, and she can pass. Like, yes, it, they're a tough team. There's a reason you know they came into this finals as the favorite. Um, we, we talked a little bit before the show about like, are there big picture, you know, futures, um, now that we want to look at the series. I personally am not, I'm not going to try and chase the aces at this point. I don't think there's a ton of value in that. I still lean towards the Liberty in this game. And I still, like, if I didn't have a bet at this second, I think mm -hmm. I would bet the Liberty in the series. Um, but again, I, I'm not going to add to that. I definitely am not going to add to that after what sure. I saw in the second half of game one, but I'm also not seeing enough to, you know, bur burn that ticket. Um, and, okay. and you, you mentioned just one last thing. You mentioned how it's a must win. I do. I think that there is, there's something to be said there. I think 
it, the zigzag theory in the playoffs, we do often see, you know, whether it's motivation or whether it's just teams, you know, coming out extra fired up when, when they're down. Um, th- I mean, there is these series, you can say it doesn't start till the home team loses, right? So even if right. the Liberty go down 2-0, there is some hope for them. It, it would be very hard to beat the the Aces three straight games, but... Yeah, I, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> there is <laughs> technically life, but I think they will approach this as if it is, you know, a, a, an absolute... Do or die. And you mentioned the the, uh, the series price, so I just want to update that because... You know, prior to the series, we had the Aces at at minus two ten, Liberty plus one seventy. Now the Aces are at minus four fifty, Liberty plus three fifty. So, you know, I get why you're not going to make any sort of rash decisions right now and veer too much off of what you thought coming in. So you're not necessarily going to bet more. You're not burning your ticket. Um, but for those out there who are interested, that's the value you are getting on the Liberty at this point. I want to remind everybody that buckets is presented by BetMGM. So use bonus code action when signing up to get up to $1,500 paid back in bonus bets. If your first bet loses for new users in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia and Wyoming terms and conditions apply must be 21 or older. Now, before we get a little uh, more detailed, just in terms of how we attack this game from a betting perspective, I did want to also mention um, the odds for the correct series result. You know, we talked about um, the strategy a little bit going in where we were kind of leaning um, again, that value with the Liberty and uh, potentially winning the series 3-1 or 3-2. I'm definitely feeling more comfortable with 3-2 <laughs> at this point, just because I I felt like I could see them winning in four games if they took game one. That obviously did not happen. Um, but just interestingly, the aces to win 3-0 are at plus 175. I'm not sure that should be the shortest odds. Like I, yeah. I, I feel like... I would be shocked if <laughs> the, the Liberty didn't at least get a game. Um, but just so you know, Aces 3-1 plus 200, Aces 3-2 plus 325. That Liberty number now, 3-2 is at plus 700, was plus 500-ish. Um, and then Liberty 3-1 at plus 1,000, if you're so inclined. Yeah, I, I think... The, I don't see a ton of value in any of those specific markets right now. Um, I do think that, like I said, if you're a new better who's coming into the series, I, I wouldn't put a lot there, but I do think I still show value on the Liberty side. I know that, you know, maybe I should be really weighing that second half more, but I, I, I'm going to hesitate until I see another full game um, of, of that kind of difference in, in effort level or focus or whatever you want to call it that was really on display there in the second half. Um, but yeah, that, that plus 170 seems a little light. I think the Liberty, you know, based on this, if the Aces are at home, minus four and a half, um, it should be that the Liberty are favored in game three. So if, you, if you're if you on the Aces, it doesn't even, if you're on the Aces side, it doesn't really benefit you to bet that sweep because um, you're going to get a, a, like a decent, close right. to plus 100 type number just for game three, even if they go up to nothing. So I, I don't see a ton of value in any of those series exacts right now. Fair enough. And uh, just for what it's worth, the finals MVP market hasn't shifted a ton. Asia Wilson is still the favorite, followed by Brianna Stewart. Um, And you have uh, Kelsey Plum plus 900 now, Chelsea Gray plus 800. So it's it's interesting. What's Jackie at? Jackie Young plus 900. Oh, her. So and, I think that dropped a bit. It seems like the the they've skewed it away from Liberty towards like I think I think Jackie was like thirty five to one before the series. Um, I think yeah. the, of those, Plum is the most interesting to me at, at plus nine hundred. Hmm. We'll, we'll talk through some some props here in a minute. I know we might even have a, a potential fun little head to head, but Plum is the okay. one who who yeah. Let's let's get into it. Let, let's move. We'll move. That can be a transition into game two. Oh, just, to, just to double check, you're not interested in betting the game itself. So I lean Liberty. 
Um, and I lean a little bit to the under as well. Um, the pace for this game wasn't, uh, game one wasn't incredibly high. Um, it was mostly good shooting that, that brought it over. Um, but it, neither of these, uh, the, the spread or the total interest me as much as a few of the player props that, that I like, um, more. So if I, if I, if I had to lean aside, I would go back to Liberty, but man, it, it makes me nervous enough that I'm not, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna bet yeah. it. I'm gonna, you know, I'll say if, if I had to be on a side, I would I would take that side, but I'm I'm not going to be betting it. I'd be more likely to look live and see if you know that sm- that snowball effect we talked about, or if we see the first half and the aces like that looks like there's that gap in in uh, in energy again. Then I might take a live aces spread. The Liberty would yeah. really have to show me for like a full game to live bet them um, because because they did disappear in the second half there last game. I think I'm going to bet them. Ooh, I, think okay. I, I think I, I got to bet him. I think it's, um, I, I am tempted to go money line just because like I said, uh, which is at like plus plus one sixty five or so, um, just because they, they got to win. They just, they just, <laughs> I don't well, know. I, I think the money line, it might be a wise, a wise approach just because of, you know, if we are starting to see this pattern like, time and time and time again, that we're just not going to get a close game. It's going to, when, when one right. team gets ahead, it's snowballing a little bit. If it's like, because they, the D team shoot a lot of threes or if, you know, it's Chelsea gray factor or whatever it may be. I, I think money line is, is a good approach until we see that, that close game. Well, Sandy Brandello talked about, how they've responded well all season. It makes me nervous that she even had to address that, Mm. but it is true. Um, And so with the season essentially on the line, I'm I'm sort of counting on that, but let's get into some props because I'm still skewed. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We talked about uh, John Quill Jones rebounds last time out, which is a favorite of ours. And I think she just went under. So it was at what? 11 and a half last time. Yeah. And she had eight rebounds through like 14 minutes and then just disappeared. Um, And I thought there were a couple of tip outs um, that, that maybe uh, other people got credit for, but um, no, it, it, I mean, again, it, it, this first half, second half, it's, it's one of the weirder, like one game samples to, to kind of look at because the, the the halves were just so different. Um, but I, I am fine going back to John Cole here. I, that is uh, over 11 and a half. I'm going to go back to it again. Um, we saw in the first half that, you know, she almost, you know, she almost got there in, in a half. And, mm-hmm. and there were certain plays where she could get two, three rebounds. So, you know, I, I do think it was very much a point of, of emphasis for Becky and, and the, the Aces coaching staff to say we are keeping them off the glass. Um, so this is, I, I think it was like a, you know, three quarters of a unit bet for me for game one, I might chop that in half, but it's still one of the player props that, that I'm looking at, um, in a game that kind of feels like it could go any direction. Yeah. And, you know, she still finished with 10, so it was, it was close. And I think you got a little bit burned too, by the fact that the game was essentially out of reach in the fourth yeah. quarter. And so, um, there was a total shift both in body language and, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, getting even those last like two minutes or so, you know, subbing out the starters, it was kind of yeah, like just yeah. you just miss one or two more opportunities to grab some boards. Um, who else do you like for game two? Yeah. So the second one I'm looking at um, is Kelsey Plum over 19 and a half points and that you can get that plus money out there. So in game one, she had 26 points and that was even though she went one of seven from deep. So we talked a lot about how the Aces backcourt really took advantage of those Liberty guards. And I think, and, and you even mentioned the plum quickness. And I do think that was the biggest factor was she was just able to get into the paint and finish. You know, I don't know if she's going to finish like that every game. I think she about shot like 75% from two, but even if you take that down a few points, she has the ability to make that up for, she went one for seven from three, you know, that's more typically a three for seven for her. So I could see those canceling out pretty evenly. And it's, it's pretty clear to me that, you know, if, if something is working as well as the Aces backcourt was working against uh, the Liberty backcourt in game one, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't go back to it in game two. So she's also, you know, like we said earlier, she's basically kryptonite for a zone. So if they go to a zone, she's either going to be able to sh- be the one to stretch it out or she's going to be able to slash and, and attack that that zone as well. We saw um, Tiffany Hayes have a lot of success, another lefty lefty guard mm-hmm. against the, the Liberty in the last series. Um, 
and she's she's one who you can escalate a little bit because she does have that high ceiling if a, if a bunch of threes drop for her. So if, if these markets aren't out yet, but if you see like to score 25, um, that that could be one that has potential value to it. If it's, you know, in something like the plus 250 to plus 300 range. Um, I, I, I don't know. I she's she has so many different ways to get to that point total against this Liberty team that I think it has a, a pretty pretty high floor, even though in, in past games against Liberty, she, she has struggled. So it's, again, we're working, we're deciding whether to work off of one game sample of the finals, five game sample of, uh, you know, the series between these two or the full season. And you're, you're trying to weigh all these different factors. Um, so I, I think I'm looking a lot towards that game one. Um, there's some people out there who maybe would prefer to take a full, you know, full season approach instead. Um, but I think with this matchup and and the potential for for different alleys down there for for Plum, I'm I'm comfortable going with over 19 and a half. So I was actually leaning under on this only because um, I think out of those three guards that had incredible performances in Game One, she's the most likely to be streaky and the most likely to potentially regress. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, I probably wouldn't, I'm probably not going to bet either way on it, but maybe save that for when the aces go on the road because she's in particular struggled at Barkley center. So, um, that's just something to, to keep an eye on just for what it's worth too. She cleared that number in two of their six postseason games. Um, she had 18 in one of the games against Dallas. Um, so yeah, I don't know. She, she, she can be like, if, if I were to pick someone to regress, it would probably be her. Sorry, KP love you. But, um, <laughs> no, and this but, is a uh, fun little, little buckets, like mini head to head. So we'll have to have, maybe we'll I should just have a little, maybe I just should have yeah, a little fun with it. And, uh, <laughs> all right. If I'm, if I'm brave enough, I will. Um, <laughs> And then who else did we want to talk and then, about? Yeah, the last the last one I have is Asia Wilson under nine and a half rebounds. Uh, it's a little bit juiced, um, but I I just don't know why they have it nine and a half instead of eight and a half. She hasn't even topped eight rebounds in a single matchup with the Liberty All Series. Um, even though the Aces did do well on the glass last game, she still only had eight rebounds. Um, I think this number is you know for for people who are looking at season as a whole. Um, or playoffs as a whole, she has done well on the glass, but I think she's so focused on keeping, you know, JJ or Stewie off the glass that that cuts into her own rebounding a little bit. Um, and we've seen that every game against the Liberty this season. So this is one where I just think it's, you know, a little bit too high and I'll, I'll take the, the under nine and a half, even with a little bit of juice there. Okay. So I'm going to throw another one out there that I'm interested in and that's, um, Sabrina to go over points because she's kind of, she has that every other game type (laughs) of um, thing going on here in the playoffs, which I don't love because, you know, she's obviously so dependent on that three ball. um, But you are getting it at plus money. If you want to go over 16 and a half, I saw it at like plus one Oh six, which I thought was intriguing. Um, It's not something I would put, probably a whole unit on, but, um, that's another one that I was looking at. And then I also felt like I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, you know, sticking with Asia unders. Cause I'm trying to think of again, like if we're flipping the script here and we're, we're thinking like the Liberty aren't as bad as they played in game one and maybe the aces that was like one of the best games they could have played, like what's going to have to give here, um, and so I'm just curious about salute. Like she's a hard one to handicap in terms of props, but I just have a feeling that she's going to be taking this personally because she in particular just played very poorly and, and lacked a lot of energy. And, you know, she was, uh, she was getting open looks early. She was hesitant, um, started to find her shop when it was too late and, you know, she's she's not i would say um in her prime in terms of her athleticism or quickness like we talked about but she is still you know one of the best point guards we've ever seen in the league she is still a superstar i just feel like 
she's taking this personally and is going to want to really respond. Yeah. Did they have a salute points prop out there? Maybe I'll, I'll, uh, let's see talk for it's, a second. What we got, you... uh, we got over under nine and a half. See, that's interesting because she got, a, I actually, I think I, I like the logic here. She cleared that in game one and that was on like one of her worst shooting performances. Like she really did not have it to start. And I do think yeah. the aces, they aren't going as hard as like the Liberty are just ignoring Kia Stokes to the point that they're getting defensive three seconds because they're so far right. off of her. But Vandersloot was the one who the aces were choosing to to slag off of when they needed to. So I, mm-hmm. I that that Courtney Vandersloot over is pretty interesting because I think with a player like that, you, you really like you're right. She she hesitated on a few, and I think that got in her head, and then she wasn't making them, and that got more in her head. And yeah. she had that layup that like she was wide open, and then suddenly Asia blocked it out of absolutely nowhere. So like. I, I actually really like that over, and I, I think I might join you on that um, because it's a pretty a pretty low number, a pretty low floor that, that has to be cleared. She she shoots threes. Um, I think she could get there pretty easily, and I, I do think that she's kind of the one who the aces will will dare to beat them. And if she can kind of confidently step into those shots instead of kind of having hesitation, now she's had a game to kind of think about it. Um, that, yeah. That's a pretty interesting over there. Yeah, I'm interested. Just, when just yours, saying. You got if you got Liberty, you got Sabrina points, Vandersloot points. That that smells like a same game parlay to me too. So maybe maybe you cook up something. Uh, yeah, in, see that might be that just sort of like a fun thing, like yeah. a, like a fun little lottery ticket. Um, exactly. Just you know, just because again, you know, you need you need these players to respond. I noticed no no Johannes uh, props are available that I've seen. Unfortunately, yeah, I, think, you well, go I don't think anyone knows books. what to do with her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if if. I don't know if Sandy knows what to do with her. I don't know if the Aces know what to do with it. She is <laughs> some of those shots she was hitting. I don't know if the you can count on those going in every day, but that's like that yeah, is that's like what how she shoots half the time. So so then again, yeah. you know she she has that in her bag for sure. So um, it would be it would be funny to get some props, but I, I don't think we're getting fourteen points from her again. But you know maybe yeah, maybe she I gets know. Again. I know it was uh, it was fun to watch. Regardless, I think yeah, you know regardless of what you were rooting for, that was uh, definitely fun to watch. Okay, here we go. Game two, bring it on. Libs need a win. Uh, we're going to be back probably uh, Friday again because I'm sure you and I are going to have to discuss and react to whatever happened in game so two. I'm so curious to see how that – I really could see – that's why I'll, I'll – let me, let me end by saying all of these bets are a little bit smaller for me because game one was just such a strange game. It, it really – it played out so yeah. similar to how I imagined and then so different that I really want to see a game two to, to, to kind of go at it full bore again, like I was feeling before the series. And, and final thought from me, I just think that once again, Becky Hammond got away with playing a six person rotation with very little resistance. So I, I really think that the Liberty are going to have to be much more aggressive, drawing foul calls, yep. make, Becky Hammond have to make a real time decision about personnel. Like yeah, that's a great she, point. She was just not like from a coaching standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, Sandy was like doing math in her head because she's like, what is going on here? And trying to figure out, should I, you know, use Marine more, do this, do that. And, and Becky didn't have to, to do any of that because everybody was humming. No, nobody was in foul trouble. So like we got the, I think the libs are going to have to make this maybe pull a, a a card out of like the Connecticut Sun style where you got to get a little grittier here get a little like get a little more physical yep. like and and see see how that serves you so that's not necessarily a, a betting related thought but just, I know we just, dipped uh, close into Liberty fan <laughs> pod at times this episode <laughs> but but I do think we genuinely <laughs> both think that 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 game one didn't necessarily show how the whole series will play out. And I think from a neutral perspective can both, can both feel that way as well. All right, here we go. We will, uh, we'll save the rest of our energy for the next pod. (laughs) Thanks for listening to buckets presented by bet MGM, Jim Turvey. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks as always. And, uh, also remember to download the award-winning action app, Follow Jim on there at Turvy Bets. Um, if you're not follow already, Maria you're at Maria C. Marino. And, and me, and follow me at Maria C. Marino and see what crazy bets I'm going to put in before tomorrow. <laughs> um, I gave you some hints um, here on this pod. But uh, 
that's it. That's all we got. Let's get buckets.